There's no free lunch in this life. Everything comes at a price, even friendship. Okay, if we pay the rent, the phone, the electric, and the internet bill, we'll be $368 overdrawn on our account. All right, let's do what we always do. We'll pay the rent, and we'll file the rest of the bills. Something's got to give around here, Mike. Why are you so sad, Miss Felda? Don't you know that a happy lady is a lady that smiles? That's very good. OK. You both won't be laughing when the sheriff padlocks the door. Velda, it's not so bad. We can at least pay the rent. Hello, Mike. Aaron. What a surprise. <laughs> Hello. I see you still have a way with the ladies. Well, thank you. Uh, what brings you? Oh, this is uh, my, my partner, Nick. Lucky to meet Aaron. Hello. Oh, yeah. I'm going to wash my hands. <laughs> sit down, sit down. <laughs> So what brings you to the Big Apple? Meetings. You know, the last time I saw you was Simon Paley's birthday bash. Oh, the way you guys threw them back, I'm surprised you even remember that party. <laughs> That's what pictures are for. <laughs> yeah. You know, I still can't believe Simon's dead. That's what I want to talk to you about. Yeah? What? Would you think I was crazy? If I told you, I don't think Simon's death was an accident. Really? What are you saying, that somebody hired the lion to eat him and the rest of his hunting party? You know Simon was a world-class hunter. He'd never let a lion get that close to him unless something went terribly wrong. Look, Aaron, uh, you and I both knew Simon pretty well. And we both knew how much he loved his happy hour, especially when he was on safari. Now, if you ask me, I just think his luck ran out. Mike, I was Simon's personal secretary for 14 years. I know him and all the people around him. And I'm telling you, something stinks around here. Can you give me something else, something to go on? It's just the way they're all behaving. I mean, Connie and all these new people she's hired. Connie? Connie was Simon's wife. I mean, they were crazy about each other. Connie just cares about money. So look, if you're worried about this, why don't you just get out of there, quit? I'm afraid to quit. If they killed Simon, what do you think they'd do to me? Please, Mike. I'm scared. You gotta help me. Okay. Everyone's got a weakness. Me? I guess I'm a soft touch for old friends. I'd known Erin for years, and I knew she wasn't prone to wild flights of fancy. So I couldn't simply dismiss her misgivings about Simon's death. On the other hand, I'd known Simon even longer, and he was prone to some wild flights. In hot air balloons, hang gliders, safaris, Arctic explorations. He was a lifelong adrenaline junkie whose pockets were deep enough to subsidize his prolonged adolescence. Simon always said, when death knocked, he wouldn't be at home. But I was home after a long day of dodging collection agencies and was dead tired. Oh, what the hell? You make another move, I'll Jackson Pollock your brains all over the wall. Mike, it's me. Simon! Son, what the? I thought you were dead. Yeah, and I'm staying dead till we find out who killed me.
My old friend Simon Paley was back from the grave. Here was one dead man with a tale to tell. I saw him do it, Mike. Gordon Flynn shot us. One at a time. The guide, three. Then me. Bullet went right through my jacket, bounced off my flask. Ouch. Ain't no kidding. I lost a pint of perfectly good 21-year-old single malt scotch. Better not tell that story to mothers against drunk hunting. I just barely managed to crawl away. Simon's tale began six months ago in Central Africa. His hunting party left camp early, following fresh lion tracks deep into the bush. But the lion is only the second most dangerous animal. The first is man. And while Simon and Marie stalked their prey, a paid assassin turned the hunters into the hunted. His name was Gordon Flynn, a playboy golf pro with dubious credentials, but a deadly accurate marksman. Simon survived. The lion, already provoked, jumped the distracted Flynn, tearing him a new one. Now, Simon was at my place after the biggest game of his life. So pack your Goodwill suits, buddy. Me and you are going to California, and we're gonna nail Marie's killer. No, I'm going. You're not going anywhere. Hey, the hell I'm not. Whoever wanted you dead still thinks you're dead. Let's keep it that way. You're staying right here. Oh, you gotta be kidding. You're dumb. The jungle was cleaner. Mm. Well, you're the big game hunter. Here, kill the cockroaches. With Simon safely stashed at my place, I caught the first flying machine west to L.A. Simon had given me a couple of leads. The first name on his list was Henry Allen, a former business partner Simon had fired. I called Allen and asked him to meet me at my home away from home, a sun-baked roach motel a few miles from Simon's corporate retreat. And the weather wasn't the only thing that was hot. So mad. 20 bucks a night and no stinking pool? Oh, kinky. Meet me by the ice machine in 10 minutes. While I was checking out, I mean checking in, Nick was keeping a check on a restless Simon. Nick. I'm gonna go nuts laying around this dump. I ought to be out in L.A. with Hammer. Oh, where the killer is? Do you have a death wish? Who is it? Me. Who's me? Changing of the guard. Just in time. I've got a date tonight. Yeah, hey, you're really enjoying this, aren't you? How's it going? Good now that you're here. I can leave. Have fun, Simon. Hi, Simon. I'm Velda. Are you OK, Simon? I can't. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Now Simon was doing the checking, his eyes glued on Velda. Meanwhile, I was waiting for Henry Allen to arrive, so I thought I'd make myself at home. But this place was too much like home. Hammer, room nine. Yeah, nothing works in this place. I mean, the TV's broken. The uh, the handle on my drawers is uh, is out. What? Uh, okay, thanks. Right. Oh, good magic fingers. Now I know why they call it magic. This thing made my quarter disappear. Yeah, Haji, Mr. Hammer again. Listen, uh, the magic fingers thing doesn't work. Yeah, well, I put a quarter in. So take a quarter off my bill. Yeah, hold on a sec. Mike Hammer? Who wants to know? Henry Allen. Yeah. Look, can we make this fast? Because I'm a very busy man. A very busy woman. Wait, what did you mean when you said there was unfinished business between uh, me and Simon Paley? 
The investigation into his death has been reopened. He died on a safari. They're going to put the blame of that on me? Should they? Look, smart guy. Simon and I were in business. He screwed me. Life goes on. And no hard feelings. Well, may he rot in hell, but if I wanted to kill him, I'd have done it seven years ago when he fired me. You know anybody who would want to kill him three months ago? Well, anybody uh, who ever did any business with him. Oh, by the way, the lions that ate him? Someone should call the ASPCA. Look, I, I have to run. In those heels, be careful. You might turn an ankle. If Henry was shook up at my suggestion he had a hand in Simon's murder, I wasn't feeling much better myself. I drove up the coast to pay a visit to Connie Paley, Simon's widow. After Simon was declared dead, Connie took over the day-to-day -day operation of his company. Her favorite spot was Simon's Seminar Center in the mountains near Ojai, a place where business plans were developed and maybe murder plots were hatched. Hammer? Oh my God, what are you doing here? Hey, Connie, it's been a long time. Good to see you again. Hey, come on to the house. I'll fix you an iced tea. Okay. You, uh, you got something more interesting? Michael, my iced tea is very interesting. Raisha! You were right, Connie. This iced tea's got a kick like one of your horses. Is it legal? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> By the way, thank you for the flowers that you sent me after Simon died. I'm sorry, I was just so out of it. I didn't send you an acknowledgement. No, it's all right. Don't worry about it. I had a friend in Scotland Yard do some checking. Apparently, the autopsies in Kenya discovered bullet fragments in two of the bodies. Bullets? <laughs> we were told that it was a lion attack. Well, somebody's lying. You mean Simon was murdered? My guess is somebody swept it under the rug to keep it quiet. Why would somebody want to kill Simon? That's a good question. Miss Finn, is everything okay? I'm fine, Jack. Mr. Hammer's an old friend. Gardner's left the gate open. I'll, uh, I'll close it on my way out. Mike. Well, let's go have a walk. Simon and I lived like brother and sister for a long time, Michael. We never talked divorce, but we had an open relationship. Then uh, he met Marie and said he wanted to get married. I said, sure. Why not? Did you sign papers? You kept it out of the papers, Mike. <laughs> they were lawyers, lots of them. Well, the questions, anyway. So, Simon's estate is all yours now. He buys the farm and you get the ranch. <laughs> Mrs. Bailey, you want to see. Yeah, Randall. This is Mike Hammer. He's an old friend of Simon's and a private investigator. Randall Nathan, Simon spoke highly of you. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Same here. Mike's got some disturbing news. He thinks that Simon and the others were murdered. <laughs> That's impossible. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody who would want to see Simon dead? Well, uh, Mr. Hammer, I, I don't have to tell you that Simon was the proverbial bull in the china shop. You know, he did not take Simon Paley Industries to the Fortune 500 by blowing kisses. <laughs> I thought this case was closed. Who'd, uh, who'd he work for? I'm self-employed. Who are you working for? Randall works for me. Oh. After Simon died, I needed someone to take over. Randall. Oh, there you are. The, uh, the meeting is about to begin. Uh, we're waiting on the both of you. We'll be right with you, Grant. Connie, uh, Mrs. Paley, we really do have to go. I'll be right there. Who's the guy in the suit? Graham Mittner. He's our CFO. Uh, let me know if you find out anything, OK? I got to go. Bye. Connie was still a knockout. So Marie must have been one hell of a woman to steal Simon's heart. Randall Nathan was cast in a tough part. It's not easy filling Simon's shoes, especially while he's still wearing them. Quit staring at me. I'm not staring, I'm looking. Don't make me get a court order. Aces over fives. Oh. You look so much like Marie, I can't take my eyes off you. 
sorry, Felton. Kings over queens. Deal. I'm done. Hey, not so fast. I'm down a buck eighty in a subway token. You gotta give me a chance to get it back. Double or nothing. Deal. While Velda was hoping her luck would change, I discovered mine hadn't. Hello, good morning, my camera private eyes. Maya speaking. Maya, what are you doing there? I'm getting my messages. Oh, well, that's nice. Are there any for me? Matter of fact, it is. The telephone company just called. They say if you don't pay by tomorrow, they're going to cut your phone, and I have to go to the pay phone. So let them cut me off. Where's Nick? Nick went to the movie. Where are you, anyway? I'm in California. California? What are you doing in California? I'm helping a friend. Oh, come in. Oh, lovely. Here's your tea and scones, Miss Maya. I just put it right there. Hello? Maya, are you there? Just a moment. But, uh, how much is the bill? Oh, that's complimentary from my boss. He oh. uh, loves your group. Oh, really? Maya! Maya! Maya, what's going on? It's nothing. It's only room service. Namaste. Room service? Our repeated requests for payment have been ignored. Your phone service has been terminated. Oh, well, that's just great. Do you mind? OK, OK. <laughs> what about Jeff Torrey? Who? Head of security. Add him to the list. Yeah, put him at the top of the list. How's Simon doing? He's in the shower, and no, I'm not gonna go check on him. Any news on Flynn? Yeah, I finally cracked the code on Flynn's California bank, and our golf-playing murderer, he made a deposit the day before he left on safari. Are you ready? $250,000 cash. Well, it had to be cash. That way it's untraceable. Now we just have to find out who paid him. But what's Nick got? Nick's got lunch with Flynn's girlfriend. It should be a long lunch. All right, thanks, doll. Miss you. It's working! 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 It's working! Yeah. It's working! While I was riding out another earthquake in my room, Nick was grilling a blonde tornado at Lou's. Gordon Flynn's ex, Shelby. So how long did you live with Gordon Flynn? Eight months. But I'll be living with credit card debt he ran up for two years. He's a deadbeat? Gordon liked to spend money. He didn't care whose. I should probably give you this. It might help. It's Flynn's black book, huh? It came in a box of personal effects the police sent back from Africa. Graham Minter? Randall Nathan? Connie Paley? Jeff Torrey? You get the whole starting lineup here. Plus a couple of other bimbos that he thought I didn't know about. Well, bimbos need golf lessons, too. He didn't improve my game. Woo! Mama Lucia. Shelby might not play golf, but she was a champ at the 19th hole. Over at the 36th, Skip was digging out of a hole with his wife. A thousand times, you're always right. Everything all right at home, Skip? Oh, right as rain. Did you dig up any dirt on Jeff Torrey? Oh, it wasn't that hard. I mean, the uh, guy's got a rap sheet longer than Don King's hair. He did nine months for assault and battery. His mob lawyers plea bargained his racketeering charges. How does a guy with that kind of baggage get a job at Simon Paley Industries? Simon Paley? The guy who owns all those TV stations that was eaten by the tiger? It was a lion. Well, I don't know how he got the job. Did you find anything else out? Yeah. He's overdue at the library. Velda, I'm busy. Thanks. Yeah, Gleason. Oh, hi, man. No, I know. I said you're right. While Skip was making things right at home, I made a left into the driveway of the corporate compound. With Simon out of the picture, Connie Paley had attracted some unsavory assistants. Go ahead. Jeff Torrey and Nathan Randall, for starters. With millions up for grabs, I was convinced someone was skimming the profits. So I went undercover to do a little skimming of my own. Mr. Mittner. My camera. 
Now look, I've got nothing to say to you. Wait a minute. Simon Paley was your best friend, wasn't he? Don't you want to know where somebody would want to see him dead? Of course I do. Well, then help me out. It's not that simple. But I'll make it simple. What do you know about a guy named Gordon Flynn? Gordon? Not much. He was on the safari. He, he gave golf lessons to people who were interested. What about you? Did you ever go out on their links and hit the little ball around? Come on, golf is not my game. What about murder? You really don't think I had something to do with Simon's death now, do you? Give me a reason not to. When the time is right, I've got to go. One last question. What was the financial status of Simon Paley Industries before Simon died? Look, Hammer, you don't get it. This is a very delicate situation. I can't talk to you right now. I said when the time is right, I'll be in touch. With friends like Mintner, Simon might have been better off with the Lions. But that's always been the test of true friendship. Who stands with you when you're down? Mintner acted like he was trying to protect himself. But from what? It was time to call on a true friend, Simon's secretary, Aaron. It's just me. Hi. My office. What is going on? Aaron, what can you tell me about the company's financial status at the time of Simon's death? Simon called for an audit before he died. Why? Was the company in financial difficulty? I don't know, but Simon had his suspicions. When the bean counters showed up, there were a lot of nervous people running around here. Can you give me a copy of that audit? I... Uh, I can't. I'm sorry. If they even catch me talking to you, you better go. Mike. Simon was murdered, wasn't he? Well, I can tell you this. Cats eat rats, and the rats are still here. Be careful. Aaron was looking for a way out. Back in New York, Simon had already found his way out. He's gone? He escaped. How? I had to pee. When? Right after I had all the iced tea. Oh, I'm talking big hand, little hand here. I, I don't know. Around two. That was a half hour ago. Well, I'm sorry, Nick. You better call Mike. You do it, please? No. But I'll watch. Twenty bucks says Simon's on his way to California. So, Bella, I want you on the next plane and get out here as soon as possible. Mike, I'm really sorry about all this. Hey, don't worry about it. I'll just take the plane fare out of your salary. Put Nick on, will you? Hey, Mike. What's the word on Gordon Flynn? Well, I got his address book. He was giving Randall Nathan golf lessons three times before he went to Africa. Also, Connie Paley was working on her short game. Graham Mintner was in there. And guess who else? Jeff Torrey. Torrey's the wild card. I asked Flynn's girlfriend if he was good with guns. He was a championship skeet shooter. Very interesting. All right, Nick, all good work. I'll be in touch. Mike, you Mike? Talk about obscene phone calls. The CFO was DOA, and I thought I'd had a tough night. But hell, I only took a bullet through my motel window. Mittner's neck was snapped, and he was hung out to dry on a horse walker. Mittner said he'd talk when the time was right, but now his time was up. Connie and Randall were taking it hard, but not as hard as I was about to take it. Mr. Hammer, stop, please. I want to talk to you. You didn't say Simon says. Tori says. Hey, hey, I want to talk to you. Hey, hey, watch the suit. I got three more payments to make. Mr. Hammer, this case is closed. We already dealt with an army of cops and, and reporters and satellite trucks. We, we simply don't have time for any uh, imported rented dick. Capiche? <laughs>
advice, pal. You get in that piece of crap and you haul your ass to the airport. Because if I see you on this property again, I'm going to send you home in a body bag. Capiche? Tori and his goons didn't just serve up a knuckle sandwich. I was force-fed a fist buffet that left me unconscious, but awakened the subconscious. Prosecution calls my camera. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your full name. Michael William Hammer. William? Order! Mr. Hammer, what is your means of employment? Private investigator. How long have you been a private investigator? About uh, 20 years. Tell me something, Mr. Hammer. During these 20 years, did you ever make a decision to take a person's life? Yes, I have made the decision to take another person's life. Did you enjoy killing people? You betcha. I mean, getting even is really what it's all about for you. I mean, you're really an Old Testament kind of a guy, aren't you? I mean, an eye for an eye and all that. I mean, you believe that you've been ordained ordained by a higher power to take the law to your own hands. Objection, Your Honor. He's badgering the witness. Overruled. Will the court stenographer please read back the last statement? Oh, oh I get lost. Okay. You don't have to. I can answer the question. And the answer is yes, I have taken the law into my own hands. I do feel good about it sometimes. I feel bad about it as well. Because I'm tired of waiting around for a justice system that lets killers off the hook and lets them back into our neighborhood so they can blow our kids away. I'm tired of kids getting killed. I'm tired of women getting killed. I'm tired of people having to fall prey to scumbags. And what do we do? We sit around and we wait for the next crisis on the two. The next OJ, the next... The next Saddam Hussein, the next Unabomber. We wait for all the bad news to justify our miserable existence. Well, let me tell you something. I don't buy it. Because I happen to be one of those guys who likes good news. Good news. And the more good news, the better. But I realize that I am somewhat of an idealist. That's not very fashionable. I guess I'm uh, a fool. Yes, you're an Old Testament kind of a guy, but that's because you feel that for all the good people there are in this world, and there are a lot of them, there are so many more scumbags. Greedy, selfish, lazy, immoral, power brokers, whose only objective in the world is to try whatever scam they can, whatever scam they can to get more money in their bank accounts and more space on their hard drive. Bigger, faster, more money. More power, more, more. These people don't care about the world. They don't care about the people on this planet, but you do. You'd die for them, wouldn't you? That's because you're guilty, Mr. Hammer. You're guilty of caring. You're guilty of caring, Mr. Hammer. I was guilty. The truth is, this wasn't about helping out a friend. If Simon had been a stranger off the street, I'd still be here. I was doing this for me. I sure as hell wasn't doing this for Simon. It was becoming a real pain in the ass. Simon, what the hell are you doing here? I just wanted to see my world through a dead man's eyes. Yeah. Or a killer's. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about Mintner. Mintner? Mintner's dead. Somebody broke his back and turned him into a one-horse carousel. Oh, Christ. I didn't do it, Mike. He's one of my best friends. I want to know, who the hell is that with Connie? That's Jeff Torrey, your security director. Yeah, well, I didn't hire that punk. Tell me something. Did. Tell me something. When you died, how much did Connie get? She got everything. And if she divorced you, she'd only get half, right? You son of a bitch. <laughs> You know something? You were a lot less trouble when you were dead. Whoever said two things improve with age, wine and friends, obviously wasn't a friend of Simon's. Simon says he didn't kill Medner. The hunt was on to find who did. Well, if you didn't kill Medner and you trust Connie and Randall, then it had to be Tori. 
I'll tell you one thing, Tor is no Eagle Scout. Velda. I'm mad at you. Hey, Vel, what'd you find out? Well, I had Skip Gleason run a background check. Tori has a record. He did some time on an assault, and he plea bargained his way out of a racketeering charge. And, by the way, my flight was great. Thanks for asking. Tori's a killer, Mike. Connie's in big trouble. She could be next. You're right. Watch him. I'm gonna go see Connie. No, no, I'm going with you. No, no, you're going nowhere. Sit. If you're not willing to do the time, then don't do the crime. I'd been found guilty of caring. Now it was time to serve my sentence. I went back to the Paley compound to hand out a little justice to Tori and his boys. <laughs> I was also hoping Connie would remember our years of friendship and her love for Simon. And give me a few straight answers to some straightforward questions. Connie. Mike, you startled me. Yeah, it's going around, like Mintner on that horse walk. <sighs> yeah, you don't have to tell me. What's with you and Jack, Tori? Does he wear boxers or briefs? So I'm dating Jack. Is that a crime? Hammer, you're under arrest. What for? Just a minute. This man's a guest in my house. You assaulted Jeff. Oh, come on. Jeff was just as much to blame as he was. Hey, Connie. You're free to go, Mike. Thanks. Am I free to come back? Somehow, I don't think so. Bye, Mike. I may have worn out my welcome mat with Connie, but I was doing better than Tori. He'd been torpedoed. The whipped cream on a dead man float. Right there, officers. Uh, this is gonna clog up the skimmer. I just worked on this pool the other day. What have you been skimming lately, Randall? Tori was the turd in the punch bowl of life. And I was now officially persona non grata at the Paley place. Normally, a police escort is a sign of respect. But with all due respect to the police, they should have been escorting Connie and Randall Nathan to the gas chamber. The bodies were stacking up around here like commuter flights over LaGuardia. But I still needed proof. That's when I drew to my inside straight. Aaron. Hello? Mike, hi. It's Aaron. Listen, I made copies of the audit. It's unbelievable. Connie and Nathan could withdraw up to a million dollars without any approval. Really? Sounds like they're draining the accounts dry. Simon must have known about it. That's why he called for the audit. And that's why they must have killed him. You're a brave girl, Aaron. I owe this to Simon. Well, I owe you one. Thanks, sweetheart. I'll be in touch. So? Looks like you were right. Mike, there's no stinking pool. I never said there was. Unbelievable. Huh. I know I've said this a hundred times, Velda. If you had dark hair, you'd be a dead ringer for Marie. Am I missing something here? Simon thinks I look just like Marie. Oh, no, not just like, honey. Clones. Put your clothes on. We're going into town. What for? We're going to do some shopping. Hey, I'm game. Just give me a couple seconds to change. What's going on now, Mike? We're gonna play some mind games. Hi. What is it? I don't know. Something spooked the horses. 
Hello, Connie. Randall. Marie? Oh, you are, you're dead. We're both dead. Glad to see me, Connie. You can't be here. Huh? We had you killed in Africa. Your golf pro ran into a little hard luck, Connie. Shooting for birdie and ended up with a double bogey. You. What is this? Huh? What is going on here? Not you too. Someone else, maybe. But you, Randall. You are trusted. Well, you made a mistake. Because <laughs> you mean nothing to me, Simon. Nothing. Some kind of a trick. This can't be happening. No, oh, it's happening all right, sweetheart. By the way, thanks for the confession. That should play well to the grand jury. Anybody but you, Connie. After all... We've meant to each other everything we've been through. If, if you wanted the money, you could have asked. I would have given it to you. Given it to me? I earned every penny. You made my life hell for years. Cheating on me right in my face. But Marie was different. You actually fell in love with her, Simon. Let you marry her. <laughs> no, you couldn't. So you had Randall hire a hitman. A hack golf pro named Gordon Flynn, whose sideline addiction happened to be playing the ponies. Flynn lost a bundle. He was in big debt. So you laid a big lump of cash on him and sent him to Africa, where he pulled a shooting iron out of his golf bag and rained a hail of bullets all over Simon's hunting party. But Simon's flask took the hit and saved his life. Flynn wasn't so lucky. Turned out to be 200 pounds of catnip. And then you had Randall kill Mintner because Mintner knew the truth about the whole operation. Of course, you were a little worried about me, too, so you told Randall to drop by the motel and put out my lights. But I kept them on just for you, Connie, because I knew you weren't done yet. Jeff Torrey was a loose cannon. He had a temper. You couldn't control him. So you lured him to your bosom, and then Randall snapped his neck. Talk about love him and leave him. You thought you had it all, Connie. Simon's fortune, revenge for Marie. Too bad you won't be able to enjoy it in Sing Sing. Why, Connie? Why? Mike, he needs an ambulance. No, what is supposed to happen like this? It's over, Connie. Drop it. I'm not going to prison. Well, you should have thought of that before you opened Pandora's box. I'll just die in prison, Mike. I'll just die. No, you won't. Drop it, Connie. Or you'll die right here. Now drop it. You wouldn't. Yes, I would. Life is one long trial. Maybe that's a glass half full view of the world, but I've seen too much of it in my time to wear rose colored glasses. Sooner or later, we all face the ultimate judge. And I believe we're held accountable for our actions. If not in this life, surely in the next.
Dave, I'm sorry, pal. I thought this was a drive-in window. Drive-in! Drive-in! They're looking in! Haji, the motel manager, held me accountable for the damage. Wait till Velda sees this bill. Are you okay? Simon Paley got back the keys to his kingdom. In downtown L.A., I swung by Paley Industries to say goodbye to my real friend, Aaron. Any word from Simon? Not since he left for safari. Safari? Some guys <laughs> never learn. But I can tell you this. I think the smartest thing he ever did was making you managing director of his entire operation. How's that feel? Feels great. Well, you earned it. <laughs> Thanks. You know, Mike, security's a top priority for us now. We need someone who's strong and honest. Someone like you. What do you say? How'd you like to run our West Coast division? No, uh, no. I, uh, I got a torch for my lady in the harbor. I gotta get back to New York. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> All right. But it's an open-ended offer. That's the best kind. Take care of yourself. You too. Friendship's a fine thing when it's the real deal. Two people meet and hit it off. Sometimes it's only a chance encounter. But without even knowing it, we leave our mark behind. And that person you may never see again will still remember you long after you're gone. You can't put a price on that.